good morning students today i'm going to deal with the topic light detectors light detectors from the unit introduction to analytical and spectrophotometers upon completion of this presentation you will be able to understand what are light detectors the properties of light detectors types of light detectors used in visible region uv region and ir region upon completion of this presentation you will be able to understand what are light detectors what are the properties of light detectors the types of light detectors used in visible region uv region and ir region light detectors a detector converts light into a proportional electrical signal which in turn provides the response of the spectrophotometer in other words a detector is a transducer which is used for converting the electromagnetic radiation into electrons and subsequently a current begins to flow in the readout circuit that is the purpose of a detector a detector is nothing but a transducer which converts electromagnetic radiation into electrons and subsequently a current begins to flow in the readout circuit many a times this photocurrent the current produced by the light detectors is said to be photocurrent this current will require amplification particularly when measuring low levels of radiant energy the current produced by the transducer or the detector will require amplification particularly when measuring low levels of radiant energy the human eye serves as a sensitive detector for color changes and was used effectively in color matching colorimetric instruments the human eye serves as a sensitive detector for color changes and was used effectively in color matching colorimetric instruments though the human eye served the desired purpose of for anal analyzing what type of color it is being generating it is always required to analyze the sample so though the human eye served the desired purpose but the analysis was proven to be individual bias and judgment this necessitated the requirement for other sensitive detecting processes so with the human eye you are not able to sense the you are not able to identify the colors so effectively or identify the radiation or identify the nature of the radiation that may be emitted so you there is a necessity or a, or there is a requirement for other sensitive detection options in the years that followed detectors based on electric charge transfer properties were developed with time what happens detectors based on electric charge transfer properties were developed the human eye is a low resolution detector of visible light only it cannot identify the other radiations like the ultraviolet rays or the infrared rays it can it is a low a uh, resolution detector of visible light most well dissolved light well resolved light detectors are essentially photon transducers are they are they are called as photon detectors or photon instruments that detect electromagnetic radiation okay the human eye is only a very low resolution detector so replacing the human eye we have other detectors like the photon detectors or the photon transducers which detect electromagnetic radiation 
and converts into it into an electrical signal which can be amplified and transformed into an interpretable spectrum so the photon detectors or the photon instruments or transducers they detect electromagnetic radiation and convert it into a electrical signal which can be amplified and transformed into an interpretable spectrum an array of detector exists covering the various ranges of the electromagnetic spectrum we have various arrays of uh, uh, detectors are there but mostly we will be dealing with photon detectors for ultraviolet visible and in near infrared radiation we are going to deal with the basic uh, photon detectors coming to the light detectors optical signals generally are weak and distorted when it emerges from the end of the fiber from where it is being uh, uh, emitted the photon detector must meet the following strict performance requirements these are some, some of the requirements of the detectors photon detectors optically signal which is being uh, produced is generally weak and distorted it needs to be amplified some uh, amplification must be carried out so the any any light detector or any optical detector should meet these criteria should meet should re, meet these requirements these are the requirements of any light detector the first one is a high sensitivity to emission wavelength range of the received light signal it should have a very high sensitivity to what to the emission wavelength of range of the received light signal then the minimum addition of noise to signal your uh, is should be minimum noise to signal ratio should be minimum a minimum addition of noise to signal then a fast response speed to handle the desired data rate you need a fast response speed to handle the desired data rate then it must be insensitive to temperature variations it must be compatible with the physical dimensions of the fiber okay and it should have a reasonable cost compared to the other system components and have long operating lifetime these are the basic requirements or the performance requirements of any light detector any light detector or any optical detector which we are using in the spectroscopic analysis should uh, basically have very high sensitivity to the emission wavelength range of the received light signal and a minimum addition of signal to noise ratio then it must have a fast response speed to handle the desired data rate then it must be insensitive to temperature variations it must be insensitive to temperature variations then it must be compatible with the physical dimensions of the fiber it must be compatible with the physical dimensions of the fiber then it must have reasonable cost it must be reasonable its cost must be reasonable compared to the other system components and it must have a long operating lifetime so these are the basic requirements of any light detector basic requirements of any light detector so modern spectroscopic detectors can be classified into four basic categories modern spectroscopic detectors can be categorized into four basic categories the first one is the photo tube the second one is the photo multiplier then we have the diode array detectors and charged coupled devices so in the spectroscopic analysis the modern spectroscopic detectors used are photo tube photo multiplier tube diode array detector charge coupled detector diode array detector charge coupled devices these are the four basic categories of detectors before going into the photon tube detectors or the first one is the uh, photo tube detectors 
these are all single element detectors the photovoltaic cells then solid state photo devices then photo emissive tubes okay photo emissive tubes or photo multiplier tubes they are all they are all photo tubes and photo multiplier tube are all single element detectors the second one is the multi element detectors are these diode array detectors or multi element detectors charge coupled detectors okay coming to the um, uh, there are some important characteristics of any detector it must have very good spectral sensitivity as i told you the sensitivity must be high and its uh, response must be fast and its gain and response time must be high okay so these are the requirements of any light detectors practically radiation detectors are basically classified into two types they are photon detectors and heat detectors photon detectors which respond to the photons and heat detectors respond to the heat flow photon detectors respond to the photons and heat detectors which respond to the heat flux ir radiation detectors are of heat detectors ir radiation ir stands for infrared radiation detectors are of heat detectors they use the heat detectors photon detectors are spectrally selective they are spectrally selective and consists of an active surface photon detectors they consist of active surface that absorbs radiation in turn to cause emission of electrons for generating a photo emission current as in the case of photo emissive cells photon detectors are spectrally selective and consists of active surface they consists of active surface that absorbs radiation in turn to cause emission of electrons for generating a photo emission current as in the case of photo emissive cells or to promote electrons they promote electrons to conduction bands enhancing conductivity of the device as in the case of photoconductive cells uv and visible are also also near infrared have enough energy to initiate this process the process of photo emission and photo conduction all these processes can be very well initiated with uv ultraviolet and infrared near infrared radiations okay the commercially uh, available photo detectors are photon detectors in other words they are the photovoltaic cells we have then the photo tubes and photo multipliers photo conductive devices and ldrs and silicon diode detectors these are the four types of uh, detectors which are most commercially available they are called photon detectors as i told you Uh, they are broadly classified into two types photon detectors and second one is the thermal detectors photon detectors way which make use which respond to the photons photons are nothing but packets of energy they are light energy packets of light energy packets of energy so they respond to these photon detectors respond to the photons how these photons are generated uh that is when uh, the these uh, spectral photon detect detectors are spectrally selective they are selective devices they consist of an active surface that absorbs the radiation that falls on it and it and because of this active surface what happens they begin to emit they begin to emit electrons uh, for generation of photo emi emission current or called as photo current or they promote electrons to the conduction band and hence they e exhibit the property of photoconduction as in the case of photoconductive cells so when uv light or visible or near infrared radiation when they fall on the uh, on this uh, uh, active surface of the photo detectors they begin to emit radiation and they produce the Uh, when these they begin to emit uh, uh, photo emission uh, emission of electrons takes place causing photo emission current as in the case of case of photo emissive cells or they promote electrons to to the conduction band 
uh, enhancing conductivity in the photo as in the case of photoconductive cells they enhance the conductivity as in the case of photoconductive cells two two types one is the emission of electrons second one is the conduction of electrons that is they begin to they promote the electrons into the conduction band thereby in, thereby increasing the conduction of the devices conductivity of the devices as in the case of photoconductive cells so commercially photo the photon detectors are classified into uh, the photon detectors we have the examples are they are photovoltaic cells they are phototubes and photomultipliers photoconductive detectors like ld and ldrs then silicon diode detectors silicon diode detectors so coming to the uh, modern classification phototubes photomultiplier tubes they both come under the classification of photon detectors so we are i'm going to deal with the phototube photo so this is a photo tube which consists of an anode and a cathode there are two elements two electrodes inside an evacuated uh, chamber uh, we have two electrodes one is the anode and another one is the cathode a photon of in, a photon is incident on to the uh, electrodes see a photon a photo tube comprises of a light sensitive cathode the cathode is made up of a very uh, made up of a material which is sensitive to light this light sensitive cathode and an anode is placed inside an evacuated quartz envelope so you have your quartz envelope here this is a quartz envelope we have the light sensitive cathode the cathode is made it is a reservoir of electrons and it is sensitive to light uh, photo uh, it is made up of a material which is sensitive to light radiation and an anode is placed inside an evacuated quartz envelope there is a potential difference maintained between the two potential difference of about 90 to 100 volts 100 volts is maintained approximately 100 volts is applied between the two electrodes when the potential difference is applied the photon entering the tube strikes the cathode photon or the instant radiation when it is made to fall on this tube it enters the tube strikes the cathode and results in ejection of an electron which strikes the anode and results in a flow of current the current is generally of low intensity and needs to be amplified the response of the photo tube is dependent on the wavelength of the incident radiation okay so you have a photosensitive material the cathode is made up of photosensitive material you have an, a cathode and an anode placed in a evacuated quartz envelope placed in an evacuated quartz envelope and a potential difference of approximately 100 volts is applied between the two electrodes is applied between the two electrodes so a photon entering the when the photon when the light radiation is made to incident on this envelope the photon entering the tube strikes the cathode and results in ejection of an electron which strikes the anode and results in the flow of current results in the flow of current the current is generally of low intensity and it needs to be amplified the response of the photo tube is between dependent on wavelength of the incident radiation the response of the photo tube is dependent on the wavelength of the incident radiation this is the working principle of a photo tube which comprises of an electrode to which comprises of an anode and a cathode light sensitive cathode and anode placed inside an evacuated quartz envelope a potential difference is maintained between the two electrodes of approximately 100 volts when light radiation is made to fall on the surface of this envelope a photon entering the tube strikes the cathode and it results in ejection of an electron which strikes the anode and uh, and this results in the flow of current the current is generally of low intensity and it needs to be amplified the response of the photo tube is dependent on the wavelength of the incident light
wavelength of the in the incident light coming to the next topic is photo diodes photo diodes photo diodes are semiconductor light sensors that generate a current or voltage when the pn junction in the semiconductor is illuminated by the light or the radiation they are nothing but photo diodes are nothing but sen uh, semiconductor devices light sensors so when light radiation is fall is made to fall on the junction pn junction it generates a voltage okay when a photon of sufficient energy when it strikes the diode what happens it excites an electron thereby creating a free electron this mechanism is known as is known as inner photoelectric current this photodiode can be used in uh, as three devices three modes it can be used in three modes photovoltaic as a solar cell photovoltaic as a solar cell or it can be used in the reversed biased condition as a photo detector and forward biased as an led so we are considering the reverse bias condition because our purpose is we want to use the photodiode as a photo detector it works on photoelectric principle that is when the uh, light energy is made to fall on the junction electrons from the uh, electrons uh, uh, it gets excited electrons uh, begin to create free um, when this energy strikes the diode it excites an electron thereby creating a free electron this mechanism is known as photo current photoelectric current the device can be used in three modes they it can be used in three modes uh, that is uh, uh, photovoltaic cell as a solar cell it can be used and it can be used in reverse bias condition it can be used as uh, uh, reverse biased as a photo detector so we are considering it as a photo detector so we'll be using the photodiode in the reverse bias condition so this is your silicon photodiode structure silicon photodiode structure uh, the silicon diode pn junction positive uh, pn junction we have uh, across this junction when light is made to fall on this junction electrons begin to move okay to observe photo current the light energy provided must be sufficient to excite the electrons across the materials band gap silicon and germanium are the two materials that are used uh, often and they cover the wavelength range of 119 to 1100 nanometers they cover the range of 190 to 1100 nanometers and 400 to 1700 nanometers respectively we can use either silicon or germanium they are the semiconductor materials uh, this is as it is a semiconductor device uh, semiconductor diode we are going to use either silicon or germanium if we are uh, which covers the range wavelength range of 192 to 1100 nanometers when we use silicon and when we use germanium its wavelength range is 400 to 1700 nanometers silicon is used most commonly because it has a greater band gap silicon has greater band band gap and therefore produces less dark current noise it produces less dark current noise a photodiode is a type of photo detector which is capable of converting light energy into electrical energy it is a photo detector which is capable of converting light energy into electrical energy this is the working principle of a photodiode it converts light energy into electrical energy photodiodes are similar to regular semiconductor diodes except that they uh, when when they, they may be either exposed to detect uv or x rays or packaged in a window or an optical fiber to allow light to reach the sensitive part of the device the photo diode as i told you it is designed in the reverse bias condition it works in the reverse bias condition then features of the photo diode when we see the features of the photo diode they are excellent they have excellent linearity with respect to incident light they have excellent linearity with respect to incident light low noise then wide spectral response mechanically they are rugged 
compact and lightweight and long life. These are the features of photodiodes. Uh, that is, they are excellent linearity with respect to incident light. They have low noise. They have wide spectral response and mechanically rugged, compact and lightweight. And they have long life also. So, this makes, these are the features of the photodiode. Coming to the next uh, so, what are the materials that are used to produce photodiodes? There are several materials which are used to uh, prepare commonly used materials which are used to make the photodiodes are silicon is used as I told you earlier its wavel uh, wavelength or the electromagnetic spectrum wavelength range is 190 to 1100 nanometers. Based on the range we are going to use uh, whether it is in your in in the visible region or infrared region or IR region. Then germanium it can be used in between 400 to 1700 nanometers. Indium gallium arsenide it can be used between 800 to 2600 nanometers. Then lead sulphide which can be used between 100 to 3500 nanometers. These are the materials most commonly used for uh, used to produce photo diodes used to produce photo diodes then coming to the next as i told we have in the classification of photo detectors we have photo tube photo diodes and then the second one is the photo multipliers photo multipliers have you see when you see the picture uh, shown in the slide you can observe you have a material called photocathode and here at the end of the tube we have the anode and between the photocathode and the anode we have the dianodes we have the dianode series of dianodes will be there and this is the uh, incident radiation scintillator you have a scintillator here okay this is the construction uh, this is the, uh, the figure which shows a photo multiplier tube so for photo multiplier tube photo multiplier tube what is this photo multiplier tube photo multiplier tube is the most popular detector used in uv visible spectroscopy uv and visible spectroscopy this is the most uh, most commonly used detector which is used in uv and visible spectroscopy it comprises a photosensitive cathode anode and several dianodes as shown in the figure you can understand that what is happening here you can understand you can when we see the figure once again uh, we have the anode we have the photocathode and a series of dianodes several dianodes are there so when photon entering the tube you are having the light radiation when it enters the tube and strikes the cathode it results in emission of electrons it is a photo cathode light sensitive cathode when light rays or when the radiation falls on the cathode it begins to emit electrons the electrons are accelerated towards the first dianode as shown in the figure see from the photo cathode the incident radiation falls on the first dianode uh, the dianodes are specially, uh, specially placed, they are concave in nature, uh, they are spaced such that the reflected uh, radiation from one dianode falls on the another dianode. The electrons are accelerated to the first dianode which is 90 volts more positive than the cathode. The electrons striking the first dianode results in several electrons for each incident electron. For each incident electron, for each electron coming from the photocathode, when it makes to fall in the dianode, that dianode will pro that uh, that electron when it strikes the dianode, it will generate several electrons. This process repeats from itself from one dianode to the next, and after about ten dianodes, each photon results in a production of one not six to one not seven 
electrons. So each photon is responsible, it is going to generate when one photon strikes the photocathode, that photocathode produces one electron and this electron when it passes through the series of dianodes, finally when it reaches the anode there will be 106 to 107 electrons that means it has been multiplied. So uh, the resulting current will be produced which can be amplified that is what we have seen in this slide. The photomultiply tube is the most popular detector which is used in UV visible spec and visible spectroscopy. It comprises of photosensitive cathode, anode and several dianodes. Photons entering the tube, they strike the cathode resulting in emission of electrons. The electrons are accelerated towards the first dianode which is 90 volts more positive than the cathode. The electrons striking the first dianode results in several electrons for each incident electron. The process repeats itself from one dianode to, to the next and after about 10 dianodes each photon results in the production of 106 to 107 electrons. The resulting electrons often resulting current often needs to be amplified. So photomultipliers have high sensitivity. They have very high sensitivity for UV and visible light. They have very high sensitivity for UV and visible radiation and have fast response. However, they are susceptible to damage when exposed to high intensity light. Okay, the advantages are they have very high sensitivity uh, and for uh, uh, ultraviolet and visible radiation they have very high sensitivity and the response is very fast. However, they are susceptible to damage when exposed to high intensity light. Photomultiplier tube is inherently more sensitive than phototube. It is inherently more sensitive than phototube. It is inherently more sensitive than phototube. So, we have several types of designs in photomultiplier tubes. We have the circular cage type uh, tubes and we have also inline configurations. So, different types of uh, uh, tubes are there. So, when the instant radiation ejects photoelectron from the cathode, the working is, once again I would like to repeat the working of the photomultiplier tube, which is very, very important. The electron multiplier phototube or photomultiplier tube is a combination of photoemissive cathode and an internal electron multiplying chain of dianodes. In other words, we can tell like this that electron the photomultiplier tube or electron multiplier phototube or the photomultiplier tube is a combination of photoemissive cathode and an elect internal electron multiplying chain of dianodes. Popularly, there are two designs, the circular cage and inline configuration. The working of the photomultiplier tube is when incident radiation ejects photoelectrons from the cathode, the emitted photoelectrons are focused by an electrostatic field and they are accelerated towards the curve of the cathode. The first dianode coated, which is coated with compounds like BeO, GAP, or CS, cesium SB, CSSB, they eject several electrons when subject, subjected to the impact of a high energy electron. The overall rounded, you have, have, as you have seen in the figure, the uh, shapes of the, of the dynodes are rounded shapes, uh, converge the electrons to the second dynode. Repeating this electron multiplying process over successive dynodes maintained at higher voltages produce current avalanche that finally impinges on the anode. Internal current amplification is also thereby achieved. So the total gain of the tube uh, having if, if it has n stages, the secondary electrons emi emission factor suppose it is f per stage, then the gain of the uh, tube is given by G is equal to F power N where N is the number of stages and F is the F is the emission factor for one uh, emission factor F is the emission factor. So this is about your photomultiplier tube.
photo multiplier tube. Then coming to multiple elements detectors. So, the photo tube and photo multiplier tube are single element, they are, they are single element detectors. The next is the multiple element detectors like diode array detectors, diode array detectors. The diode array detectors, multiply, multi, multiple element detectors. In this diode array detectors, when we see the figure, you have P type and N type and the depletion region. Light from grating or monochromator is made to pass through this. Okay. The diode array detector is a multi-channel detector capable of simultaneously measuring simultaneous measurement of all wavelengths of dispersed radiation. It is able to measure the simultaneously the wavelengths of dispersed radiation. All the wavelengths, simultaneous measurement of wavelengths of the dispersed radiation. Dispersed radiation means the radiation which comes from the monochromators like uh, the prism or the grating, prism monochromator or grating. Okay. So, diode array, uh, array detectors, as I told you, it is a multi-element detectors or multi-channel detectors which are capable of simultaneously measuring all wavelengths of dispersed radiation. It comprises of an array of silicon. It comprises of an array of silicon photodiodes on a single silicon chip. Silicon photodiodes on a single silicon chip. You have uh, on a single silicon chip you have silicon photodiode. The individual diodes are subsequently scanned for response. The diode array as the name in, uh, indicates array means a, a collection of several terms, several uh, rows or several diodes. So, the diode array detector is less sensitive than photomultiplier detector but offers the advantage of simultaneous measurement of different wavelengths. Simultaneous measurement of different wavelengths. See in the picture, the light from the grating monochromator, you are getting different light, visible light. Uh, the each uh, color is being each color is being uh, uh, differentiated so you can measure individually the different colors different radiations different wavelengths can be measured simultaneously different wavelengths can be measured simultaneously okay so diode array, array detector is less sensitive it is a less sensitive detector when compared to the photomultiplier tube uh, but offers the advantage of simultaneous measurement of different wavelengths. A diode array detector is more rugged than the photomultiplier as the alignment problems are non-existent. You no need to align. Whereas in the case of photomultiplier tubes, the diodes must be aligned such that you get uh, such that your uh, photo electrons are multiplied. But here there is no alignment problem. Uh, further, there are no optical perfor performance variations with wavelength change as in the case of scanning monochromatic instruments. There are no po optical performance variations. That is an advantage of diode de array detectors. The next one is the charge coupled device detectors. Charge coupled device detectors. CCDs they are called. Charge coupled device the detectors in these see the figure of the charge coupled de device detectors we have a single pixel element here uh, we are having electron multiplying ccd architecture see the upper part the yellow part is the photodiode sensor array you have an array of photodiode sensors then charge transfer direction takes place we have a frame transfer array we have a frame transfer array from which an output node arises and the output is sent to the amplifier. Extended multiplication register we have and we have the amplifier. We send the output to the amplifier. So, charge, uh, uh, these are the charge coupled devices. Charge coupled devices are, what are these charge coupled devices? Detectors are highly susceptible. They are highly susceptible to 
susceptible detectors which are used mainly for detection of extremely low intensity light signals you want to measure the where for very low intensity light signals you are using the ccds these are similar to diode array detectors but instead of diodes they consist of array of photocapacitors okay we are going to use instead of diodes or in the uh, in the diode array we are using several diodes in an array but here you are using an array of photocapacitors arranged in one or two dimensional arrays the photocapacitors comprises of thousands of even millions of detectors they comprise of thousands or even millions of detectors emitted light from the lowest to the highest wavelength is possible detection of simultaneous detection of emitted light from the lowest to the highest wavelength is possible using these detectors from the lowest to highest length they are suitable for very low intensity light signals ccd detectors have low efficient low noise high sensitivity in comparison to diode array detectors so where we are using instead of the photodiodes array we are using photocapacitors photocapacitors are com, com, are used in the place for detection as detector elements we are using photocapacitor elements which are used as detection elements simultaneous detection of light from the lowest to the highest wavelength is possible using charge coupled device detectors these detectors have very low noise and high sensitivity in comparison to diode array detectors in comparison to diode array detectors so this is about the different types of detectors which we are using uh photo detectors which we are using for spectroscopic analysis then i would like to summarize my topic of discussion today we have discussed about the light detectors the light detectors uh, are detectors or devices or the transducers which can convert electromagnetic radiation into electrons into electrical signal electromagnetic radiation into flow of electrons that is nothing but it converts light energy into electrical energy which in turn provides a response of the spectrophotometer then we have studied about the properties of the light detectors what are the common properties or common parameters performance requirements that the light detectors must possess they must possess high sensitivity to emission of wavelength then they must uh, a minimum radio addition of noise to signal must be there Mere minimum addition of noise to signal must be present they must possess fast response speed they must possess fast response speed they must be insensitive to temperature variations they must be insensitive to temperature variations then they must be compatible with the physical dimensions they must be compatible with the physical dimensions of the fiber of the measuring de uh, devices they must be compatible to the physical dimensions of the fiber they must be of reasonable cost compared to the other components of the system and they must have longer operating time then in the modern sophisticated practically detectors are classified into two types they are photon detectors and thermal detectors photon detectors again they are further classified they are uh, into two types like single element detectors and multiple element detectors in the single element detectors we have studied about photovoltaic cells solid state photodiodes then emi photo emissive tubes then photo multiplier tubes okay in the photon detectors are detectors which respond to the photons whereas heat detectors are detectors that respond to thermal flow or heat flux this is most widely used in infrared region infrared radiation detectors are heat detector or the or thermal detectors are heat detectors 
Photon detectors are spectrally selective detectors and they consist of active surface that absorb radiation which in turn causes emission of electrons for generating a photo emission current, emission of electrons for generating a photo emission current as in the case of photo emissive cells or they promote electrons to conduction bands enhancing the conductivity of the device uh, as in the case of photoconductive cells. So, photovoltaic cells are nothing but the self-generative cells. They are very simple in construction. They are rugged and simple. They require no auxiliary power and can be connected. Uh, they consist of a metal plate such as iron which is used as one electrode and a thin layer of semiconductor material such as selenium is deposited on its base electrode. Then a very thin semi-transparent layer of silver or gold is sputtered over the selenium to act as a second electrode collector. Okay? Radiant, when radiant energy falls upon this sel selenium semiconductor, it produces electron hole pairs at the silver selenium interface. The electrons pass to the silver uh, collector electrodes. So, in this way, the flow of current in the external circuitry is uh, pro nearly proportional to the radiant power of the incident radiation. This is, this is the case of photo, uh, photo voltaic cells, photovoltaic cells. When we come to the case of photo emissive tubes, they are nothing but vacuum emissive tubes are simple photo cathode and anode combination. The photo um, the photo tube contains a light sensitive cathode in the form of a half cylindrical in cylinder of metal coated at its receiving surface. Uh, as, I, as we have seen in the uh, figure of the photo tube, we have photo emissive tube. What happens when, em, uh, when uh, radiation falls on this photo emissive tube? I will just show you the picture. When radiations fall, fall on this tube, what happens? This is the photo emissive tube. Uh, it is made up of photosensitive cathode and an anode. So, when uh, uh, and a voltage of uh, uh, approximately 100 volts is maintained between the two electrodes and one light is incident on the surface of this electrode, uh, photosensitive electrode, it begins to emit electrons and when these electrons are be made to accelerate towards the anode, a photo current begins to flow and that current is uh, proportional to the intensity of the radiation. So, when radiation strikes the photocathode, photoelectrons are ejected and drawn to the uh, positive anode constituting a current. All the electrons are collected by maintaining uh, the anode at about plus 90 volts relative to the cathode. The photo current flowing in the external circuit is directly proportional to the rate of photoelectrons emission. Okay, this we have dealt the photo tube, then the photo multiplier tube as I told you earlier, photo diodes they are, then the photo multiplier tube we have uh, photo cathode and series of dianodes and an anode, series of dianodes and an anode. In the photo multiplier tube, uh, the, when the uh, photons entering the tube when they strike the cathode it results in emission of electrons. The electrons are accelerated towards the first dianode which is 90 volts more positive than the cathode. The electrons striking the first dianode results in several electrons for each incident electron. The process repeats itself from one dianode to the next and after about 10 dianodes each photo photon results in emission of 106 to 107 electrons. The resulting current can be, can often be amplified. Uh, photo multiplier tubes are very, have very high sensitivity uh, for ultraviolet, they have very high sensitivity for ultraviolet and visible radiation and have fast response times. However, they are susceptible to damage when exposed to heat intensity. So, when we come to the uh, come to the classification where uh, where we are using what type of detectors are used in the visible and uv region we are going to use the most commonly used detectors are photo tubes and photo multiplier tubes photo diodes and photo multiplier tubes okay we are using photo multiplier tubes
then when com coming to the case of we have studied about the multiple element uh, detectors the diode ar arrays and uh, and the uh, charged couple ccds charge couple detectors in the diode arrays uh, these are multi channel detectors which are capable of detecting measuring wavelengths all the wavelengths of the dispersed radiation that is the advantage we can measure all all the radiation we can measure all the wavelengths of the dispersed ra dispersed radiation okay uh, this is the advantage but it is less sensitive diode array detector is less sensitive when compared to photo multiplier tubes they are less sensitive okay then coming to the charged couple device detectors charged couple device detectors they are highly susceptible detectors which are mainly used for uh, detection of extremely low intensity light signals extremely very low intensity light signals we are going to use the charged couple detectors charged couple detectors are used for extremely low range detection of uh, 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 extremely very low uh, intensity light signals are measured using these detectors these are similar to diode array detectors but instead of instead of using the diodes they consist of array of photo capacitors they consist of array of photo capacitors which are arranged in one or two dimensions uh, dimensional arrays instead of the photo diodes we are using photo capacitors which are arranged in one or two dimensional arrays the photo capacitors comprise of thousands or even uh, or even millions of detectors elements detector elements as also called as pixels simultaneous detection of simultaneous detection of so this is the charged couple device detectors so simultaneous uh, uh, detection of emitted light from lowest to the highest wavelength is con is possible with the ccd detectors they have low noise high sensitivity in comparison to the diode array detectors they have low noise and high sensitivity when compared to the when compared to the diode array detectors so these are the various types of detectors which we are going to use uh, in the spectroscopic analysis in the spectroscopic analysis we are going to use the different types of uh, detectors which we are going to use these are the different types of detectors which we are going to use in the spectroscopic analysis so to summarize we have learned the sources of light detectors we have learned about the properties of light detectors we have learned the commonly used light de detectors which are used in the visible region uv region and ir region okay with this we will end our presentation today